Greetings dear friends, I present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Opel Vec 4B. They are too big in cars with motors up to 125 horsepower before installing. The pads often crack, the most of the servers cannot regulate the behind brake mechanism correctly. For reference, the initial adjustment is made with the ratchet directly in the drum, and only then the cable is pulled on the lever. Otherwise the claims are age-related. The tubes rot more often in the rear part, the pumping fittings occasionally break off, the caliper anthers, especially for rear ones, are damaged, the brake cylinders are corroded, the parking brake cable is ours. The ABS on cold starts is not particularly effective, the three-channel unit practically doesn't help with the drifts and slides in the arc. Since 1998 a more advanced system has been installed, among the disadvantages of which is only an increased probability of failure due to a violation of the soldering in the plug. Often during repairs the vacuum wiring to the amplifier is broken, it becomes fragile with age, so pay attention to the condition of the T and the input to the vacuum amplifier, because the problem is quite troublesome to solve. The resource of original parts for large brakes with a diameter of 288mm is presently impressive. Front brake discs can go through 100,000, erasing one or three sets of pads. The rear brakes are a little less stable and it is advisable to change the pads more often to prevent acidification of the cylinders. Well, as with all brakes with resource pads, it is recommended to carry out intermediate maintenance of the brakes, with lubrication of the caliper pins and check the seals every 30,000 km. The Vector B running gear is somehow very scolded by the Opelists. With a more detailed clarification of the circumstances, it turns out that the front suspension is almost eternal, but the resource of 100,000 for a rear multi-link and the price of its repair is too much. If you drive Opel for 10 years, then any investment more expensive than 100 rubles, 1,000 rubles would seem too much. 2,000, 3,000 rubles for spare parts and the same amount for a work on the rear suspension will feel like repairs for modest 30,000 rubles, some Volkswagen. In general, do not believe the rammer, everything is reliable and extremely cheap by today's standards. Of course, in comparison with the old-fashioned twisted beam, the reliability is not the same and the price of repairs bites, but this is only for specially hardened over lovers, opal lovers. So the jiggly in operation will seem a little expensive. The front suspension, as already mentioned, can pass 120 to 100,000 without serious intervention, the ball joints and silent blocks of the lower arm are extremely reliable. After one and a half hundred thousand kilometers, the upper support will sag, and the chances of damaging it on bumps will increase from incredible to expected. It is better not to bring this up to this, because hoods are expensive and comfort suffers. The shock absorber itself loses its efficiency even up to hundreds of thousands of mileage, but on runs for 200 you can even find dry, non current original parts with some kind of performance. At the rear, the situation is a little worse. The new original external hinges of the levers and silent blocks of the training arms can go about 80 100,000 with proper installation. The resource of non original parts can be either comparable to the original or be several times less. Guess what is the especially thrifty car owners put on? When buying, you should carefully check all the four outer hinges for inner bushings and silent blocks. And do not forget to do camber tool. For the rear axle after the replacement, the rubber is eating up instantly. Replacement is quite expensive because it requires the use of a sledgehammer, pneumatic hammer or special pullers. Most often the lower hinges are damaged and the resource of the upper ones is one and a half to two times less and they are often changed in reserve. A typical resource for the aftermarket parts of economical series is about 30-50 thousand kilometers along our roads. And sometimes there are no knocks yet, but there is already a crack. And then thrifty owners inject ATP into the hinge housing. Are there old rips? They are trying to sell you an economy option. Opelists do not like it either, still because the ray can knock and maybe leak. With a run of a may measly 250-300,000, for some reason repairs are considered expensive, although especially for Opel owners a set of works is offered, which is estimated at less than 5,000. Buying a used one is even cheaper, a common option since there are enough of them, and buying a rail after factory restoration for some reason is considered cheap. In my opinion, the Vector B has excellent and reliable steering, except that the steering tips do not differ in a special resource and besides the steering column curtains are prone to loosening already on a 10-year-old car. The power steering pump is reliable, except that the junction of the pump reservoir often leaks, as does low the pressure tube. Moreover, the tank is located directly on the pump and is damaged relatively often, but leaks on the pressure line are rare and usually the result of very unsuccessful repair with attempts to relay the line. By the way, the radiator pan on cars with air conditioning can grind the power steering tube. 
there is a power steering radiator loop here, and if the bumper geometry is slightly disturbed, disturbed, for example after a light blow from the front end or the fan bearing is worn out, the ladder begins to grind the metal and sometimes it succeeds. This is not to say that everything is perfectly reliable here. Anyone who buys a car with V6 engines or an inline 4 in a big block, X20, X8V, X80, XE or Z22 SE is in luck. They rely on very reliable manual transmissions and automatic transmissions. But for those who have a small engine that is 1.6 or 1.8 on restyling, they put a hefty pick on, highlighting not the best units. The secret behind the separation is pretty simple. Then everything depended on the circumstances. The differential with the box body could also break or everything could be limited to noise. Check spin the wheels on the su suspended car, here you will hear the home of the gears of the die manual transmission. Fortunately, the Web4B has a solution to problem, and it is extremely simple. You just need to replace the manual transmission complete with drives and hubs with the stronger box from the F16, F18, F23, F25 series from more powerful cars. It will come out cheaper than any repairs to an old manual transmission or even buying a contract unit, but no, not everyone can decide to make such a change. Some stubbornly repaired and changed all for a stop. Here on cars with X18, XE, X20, XEV engines with manual transmission, there were a minimum of problems. On pre-styling, there were mainly F18 boxes, they have the rear left forward, and on restyling, most often F23, they have the rear right back. Bearing problems do occur, but are extremely rare. The F23 manual transmission was also installed with Tesla's engines and a 2.2 liter Z22 SE engine. Here, from the hassle, mainly wear of the gear shifts mechanism, the helicopter on the F-18 and the cables with the rocker arm on the F-23. The helicopter is repaired either by installing bolts instead of old axles or by installing a mechanism with a related dual axiom, and on the F-23 it helps only to seal the stage mold or replace it. On cars with V6, 2.5 and 2.6, there is a manual transmission of the F-25 series. For problems, the same F-18, but the bearings are reliable as a rock. Automatic machines of the AF13 series are also the ICIN TF6040LE or its more modern relative AF176041SN are very very reliable for engines after restyling by modern standards. So the fourth step of the same series on the Astra H is considered a very good unit, but everything is learned on comparison. The AF13 series boxes still turn out to be less reliable than the AF14, AF22 in more powerful cars. Due to the weaker planetary gear, more frequent failure of the drive package drum and bearing of the third forward package and almost everywhere auto neutral is on. And the AF17 series box on restyling also requires more frequent oil changes, every 50 60 thousand at least, has a much shorter service life of the friction clutch linings of the gas turbine engine blocking and its other owners are more likely to encounter well body contamination. There were also automatic transmissions with an emulsion in ATF, the radiators were supplied by value and they had problems with sealess rights up to 2004-2006. As a result, the average runs to the bulkhead for AF13, AF17 are less than 250-300,000 and they overheat much more easily than boxes are more powerful. The solution of the problems is the same as with the manual transmission. You can supply an automatic transmission of a more durable series, replacing the drive and hubs along the way. True, the lack of engine power with the loaner gearbox will be felt more strongly than on the manual transmission. The automatic transmission for large engines is a variation of ASIN 5040 and ELE. It is noticeably more reliable than 6040 SN. Less than density overheat clutches work more reliably. Age-related problems are perhaps the weakening of the brake band, cracks and pressure loss of the forward direct drum, as well as the banal contamination of the valve body and failure of the gas turbine engine with huge runs. Units with a mileage of 350-500,000 and without traces of interference are often included in the repair. Of the serious problems, initially there were only problems of error when the auto neutral function was turned on and damaged due to the ingress of antifreeze into ATP. First, that almost doesn't break. For example, the X18, XE, X20, XEV series motors are phenomenally reliable. When changing the oil, the piston groove will travel at least 250,000 km and most likely all 350 400 km. With neglectable chances of coking, all scrape your rings and compression wear. Replacing valve, stem, seals, camshaft and crankshaft all seals, cooling system spider, stow valves, numerous vacuum tubes, electrical checks, exhaust manifold cracks and other chumps do not disappear anywhere, but they are solved relatively simply and inexpensively. 
The main complaints during operation are oil leaks due to an imperfect and moreover constantly clogged crankcase ventilation system. The same can be said about the oil separator in the cylinder head and the hole in the throttle space. As mentioned above, the idle speed controller fails due to dirt, spring shrinkage and electrical problem. The thermostat is weak and the unsuccessful exhaust manifold cracks. With age, the coolant system begins to please with leaks, if the houses are not changed in time. The expansion tank is leaking in which moreover the sensor begins to sink. While well, most of the problems are caused by the aforementioned spider, the plastic pipe at the back of the engine with numerous hoses for heating the throttle, manifold, stove, reservoir and so on. The spider is expensive if the original part is used, but you can get by replacing the plastic sensor part from the back tray A. It diverges along the seam and flows directly to the starter and exhaust manifold. The cost of work in the later case increases somewhat and a lot of connections on yokes appear. A clock EGR is simply muffled with a gasket or its input is welded onto the manifold. The manifold itself is welded, cuts are made on the fender plane and they are trying to install reinforced studs. The ventilation system is cleaned, new gaskets are installed, a new oil separator is installed on the gas outlet house from the crankcase. The throttle hole is 1.5mm or even a PCB weld is installed for more accurate system operation. Now about the sensors. The dynamics and appetite of the engine depend on the state of the mass AL flow sensors and the lambda probe in the exhaust. Genuine parts are expensive and cheap replacements are virtually non-existent. Fortunately, they rarely fail in the fuel filtry, fuel pressure regu regulatory and AL filtry are in good working order. The variable intake manifold is not officially repairable. Over the years, it becomes very dirty from the inside and the intake lens adjustment flaps become jammed, after which the engine loses much either in power or in throttle response. In practice, everything is perfectly understood, only now it will have to be reassembled using a sealant, and the vacuum drives should be repaired by selecting membranes and levers. Most of the features and problems of the motor have long been eliminated, and when buying a car with such an engine, the only question remains whether the overhaul has already been done and how well. In the worst case, it is you who will have this not too expensive but unpleasant procedure. In the case of the 2.5 engine, reliability and resource are about the same. But maintenance is slightly more expensive due to the worse availability of units and a larger number of components. Of specific features, an unsuccessful oil heat exchanger in the collapse of the block prone to corrosion. The thermostat is the same place. It is very difficult to get to it, you have to remove the entire timing. But the coolant system and wiring are made better, the cylinder head covers are metal and all leaks do not bother the owners until the ventilation system doesn't clog at all and doesn't squeeze out the oil seals, and the intake manifold is much easier to maintain. For economical Opel drivers, the motor is considered too expensive, although it means, first of all, an expensive overhaul, which doesn't require so often, and in maintenance it is somewhat even cheaper than 1.8, 2.0, structurally similar engines 3.0 and 2.6 are extremely rare. 2.6 differs only in a more rare and expensive piston group, an extra pair of lambda sensors and an electronic throttle, and 3.0 were installed in a limited branch. Especially this is already a product of an independent tuning. It is simply swapped with an Opel Omega or Siab 90.00. A separate line in the 20 is the 20 and EJ engine. It is not for nothing that there is no first letter in the designation of the engine before the number because this engine of an ecological class Euro no. Euro Zero was not intended for sales in Europe either. Cars with it are usually in the simplest trim levels and Brazilian assembly, occasionally German. The engine itself is phenomenally simple, its resource is longer than that of the X20 XAV due to slightly less power and a more reliable cylinder head. The absence of EGR and catalyst from the factory, a simple intake and the simplest and most reliable sensors. But the car is not only a motor, and in the case of the Vector B this is doubly true because the condition of the body of Brazilian cars leaves much to be desired. This is even without taking into account the frankly empty trim levels, which neg negate the point of buying an old D-class car. Another simple engine on Vector B is an A12 1.6, which was installed on European cars before installing. The configurations again are the simplest, the power is only 75 forces. But in terms of traction, it is not inferior to such a bestseller of all times and people's as the 1.6 ADP BSE on Volkswagen cars. The dynamics are only slightly worse than that of the heavy A4 and Passat with such engines. On Vector B you can find two variants of such an engine, a catalyst less 16LZ2 in the simplest configuration not for Europeans, but a more serious X16SZR, already Euro 2 compliant and intended for the most economical but still European bars. 
It already has a more complex power supply system and even with EGR, an absorber and a catalyst. Reliability is high, especially from the mechanical side. The control system of a more complex version is expectedly more troublesome. The cars again are usually not in their best shape, since they were operated from the very beginning in Russia or by special economical drivers. But if 812 valves remain exotic, then here is 16 valve, 1.6 with a capacity of 101 horsepower. This is the most widespread engine for Vectra B. It is boring, but this power is enough for confined and movement around the city, and the driver feels calm on the highway. Of course, in comparison with 2.0, the difference is obvious and not in favor of 1.6, but the pre-styling 1.8 was not much better in terms of dynamics. The difference is obvious in something else. Not only were 1.6 engines equipped with less reliable manual transmissions and automatic transmissions, they themselves also had the very limited resource and many rather expensive troubles in the control system. It would seem a very conservative design with a venerable age cast iron block a 16 and a 16 bell cylinder head, but the designers clearly didn't count on an unsuccessfully and unnecessary long engine life. For pre stalling X16 XEL engines, the piston group fails, the old scrapper wings easily coke when using seven synthetics and with a replacement interval of 15,000, which of course is a whole problem for economical people. The oil drain is insufficient, so during the next repair they either change the piston to more fresh ones from the Z16XE engines or drill holes to drain the oil in the existing ones, which also turned out to be a good and reliable way out of the situation. The wear of developed bushings in the cylinder head is the second unpleasant feature of these motors and it was not eliminated even after the upgrade of the engine to the Z16XE. Because of this circumstance, replacement of the valve seals after a run of 150 to 100,000 is required every 30 to 40,000 kilometers. At the same time, many stubbornly do not repair the slender head, adding oil, since for a standard Opel owner of those years, opening the engine is already too expensive. In the more recent Y16XE and Z16XE engines, the piston group is less prone to coking, although there is a problem here, albeit in a small volume. But they were originally designed for all with a viscosity of SAE30, on which a substantial part of the mileage was operated. But the oil producer still visits them for runs of 150 to 100,000, requiring cylinder head repair and often replacing the piston group. The power supply system of the motors is also not perfect. X16 XEL engines have an electronic throttle with an integrated idle speed controller and do not have a mass flow sensor. Such a scheme is more sensitive to malfunctions of the intake system, the timing of the timing, and the tightness of the intake manifold. In addition, the EGR is here with the diagnostics, which means that it simply cannot be turned off with the tin tank gasket. All these parts have a limited service life, they are extremely reluctant to be repaired, and it is difficult to influence their resource. And if, in the case of the ignition module, it is enough to often change inexpensive candles and with the throttle the air filters and clean the crankcase ventilation system, then in the case of the ECU, external expensive work is required to transfer the control module or solder new conductors. Well, or even more expensive purchase of a new block. It is difficult to find a correctly untied used control unit and even in good condition. And changing the blocks with a set with an immobilizer is also expensive. In short, there are no cheap solutions. Engines 1.8 after the update in the face of the X18 XEL, Y18 XE, Z18 XE series essentially repeat all the features and disadvantages of the aforementioned 1.6 engines, with which they are in many ways related. They have similar cylinder blocks and cylinder heads, but the oil appetite here happens, happens with a noticeably higher mileage. 250,000 km of trouble-free operation can be expected even with minimal maintenance, and the cylinder head wears out less. Most likely, this attraction of unprecedented generosity occurs due to lower working revolutions and more rare twisting on the reining. Yet the thrust of 1.8 is not a subtly greater than that of 1.6, as much as 170 nm against 150, and it is achieved in a wider revolution per minute range. The 2.2 series that 22 SE engine, which appeared after 2000, is considered one of the most undesirable on this machine. If you try to briefly describe its shortcomings, then it's too expensive or diseconomical for car, it has expensive parts and components. Diesel engines on the Victor B are not particularly popular, and therefore it is difficult to tell in more details about their operation. But these engines are far from the worst representatives of diesel engines. The 2.0, the 2.2 motors have a resource piston group and a good cylinder head, a fairly simple power system with an electronically controlled injection pump and a larger source of turbines. And even in Russia this is an outright liquid product 
then in neighboring Belarus they enjoy well-deserved respect. On this information about the problems of the Opel Vectra be exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.